All right, so here we are. We're dealing with, uh, I, I look, I, I know I'm kind of late to the party on this one. And if I'm being honest, I, I wanted to kind of wait and see once more documentation came in. I didn't want to, I, I could have jumped in when I seen it initially and jumped in and been like, first, but I wanted to wait and see once more documentation came in. And I was initially going to wait till tomorrow and just talk about this on a sports talk on Saturday. And I think I probably still will talk about it to an extent. However, there's a real problem with this Cain Velasquez situation, and it's not as cut and dry as everybody wants to make it out to be. And I guess if I'm keeping it a hundred, and, and that's what I'm calling it at this point. So if you looked at the description down below, you know I'm calling this keeping it a hundred. So I'm, if I'm keeping it a hundred, there there is a lot of nuance here that as time progresses, which you're going to have a lot of time that's going to progress between now and the actual trial date, between now and the time when we actually start selecting a jury. If you're actually looking at it and you're keeping it 100 at this point, there's a lot there's a lot of issues here. And, and right now there's one chorus, one sound bite, one way on how people are approaching this. And you really need to be careful, uh, especially once it gets closer to that time when the when the court case comes around. So let me be clear as well. As we're jumping into this, I'm talking about it. And I have right now, I have all the document, or I shouldn't say all the documentation. I have two documents. I have the charging document in front of me right here. And in addition to the charging document, I also have the statement of facts that's here as well. And I'm gonna read the statement of facts in its entirety, just to kind of flesh this out a little a little better. But it's important to note that why there's such, there's gonna be an issue or there's a possibility for an issue is the fact that Cain Velasquez is sitting in a situation right now where we have the law. We, we're going to know what the law is. If both if Cain puts the money in that I'm sure that Cain's going to put the money in to do. And he has all of his family and friends and the entire MMA community behind him in order to do it. And I'm a, kind of a fan, so I might be somebody who contributes to that. But if he has some people putting the money in for him the way and he is a competent defense attorney, and if the prosecution is competent, so they'll be working with the same set of laws. They're gonna know the law they wanna say, this is the law that we need to go by. And they're gonna say, oh, these are some court cases that say that this is not the case. And, and they're gonna be arguing about whether or not that comes to play or not. Then the facts, it appears that from all, all intent and purpose, the facts are undisputed. So we'll see whether or not they are or not. Uh, Kane has pled not guilty as of today in going into court. But one of the things that really just jumps out at me when I'm reading this, and, they, and let me read it because it's coming, if you're coming from, coming at it from the point of a father, a parent, uh, it, as a, you, you look at it from one, from one perspective, as time passes, there's going to be another perspective that's going to pop in and it's going to play towards the prosecution's side a little more than towards Kane's side, depends on who's there on the jury. And you have to be really careful with this. Right now, the, the rhetoric that they're spewing if they stick with this, this it's a it's an open and shut case. It's a done deal. Kane's probably going to walk. So if the prosecution is not interested in actually pursuing what it is they put down in the charging document, this is a done deal. Here's the statement of facts, and I'll get to the charging document in a hot minute. But the statement of facts is this: It's I, Detective Joel Martinez, badge number four one one seven, offer the following declaration as a synopsis of police reports, documents, interviews, and surveillance footage on an attempted homicide investigation assigned to San Jose Police Department, SJPD, case number 22-059-1143 and Morgan Hill Police Department, case 22-000-436. I am assigned to this investigation based on reports, statements, video footage, and evidence. I believe the following to be true, and I'll probably just put all this here or here or maybe down here so you can see it at the same time as I'm doing this right now. Uh, so the investigation on 2-28-2022 at approximately 15-14 hours, San Jose police officer responded to a shooting into an occupied vehicle or inhabited dwelling call at multiple locations, including uh, Monterey Road and Bailey Avenue in San Jose, California, County of Santa Clara. A reporting party called and stated a vehicle had been shot into. Prior to the call, Morgan Hill police received two similar calls for service. San Jose officers arrived on scene and contacted the victim vehicle. Described as a Chevy Silverado in the area of Madone Avenue and Hale Avenue. San Jose Fire Department was on scene and provided medical treatment to victim Paul Bender. The victim vehicle had three people inside 
at the time of the incident. And Paul Bender is the stepfather to the, I say, uh, well, he's the stepfather and I'll, and I'll point out the stepfather who in a moment here. Uh, let me get back to the word. The victim vehicle had three people inside at the time of the incident. Victim Paul Bender was in the driver's seat. Vic victim Patricia Gularte was in the rear passenger seat and victim Harry Gularte was in the front passenger seat who was the, who there's an allegation against. Victim Bender has sustained gunshot wound and was transported to Regional Medical Center for treatment. The investigation showed that Velasquez followed victim Patricia Gularte and victim Bender from their residence in San Martin to Morgan Hill and then to San Jose where Velasquez began shooting at the victim's automobile. The investigation revealed that Velasquez driving a black Ford F-250 pointed a gun at victim Harry Gularte and fired a gun at him at Cochrane Hill Road and Butterfl Butterfield Boulevard in Morgan Hill. Victim Harry Gularte was recently charged with molesting a, a close relative of Velasquez and was out of custody on bail or SORP. -S I think he meant to say uh, on custody, but whatever. So Harry Gularte was accused of molesting a relative, a close relative of Cain Velasquez. However, Cain Velasquez shot Bender, who was the stepfather. L let me continue. When the victim automobile neared the intersection of Bailey Avenue, Velasquez was able to close the distance and ram the Silverado with his Ford. When his one and two also described witnessing the suspect vehicle ramming into the victim's vehicle. Velasquez continued to follow the victim vehicle to the area of Monterey Road and Bailey Avenue where he where two shots were fired. Victim Paul Bender was shot in the arm and also sustained injuries to his flank. Four shell casings were found near the intersection of Monterey Road and Bailey Avenue. A shell casing was also lodged into the exterior part of the rear passenger victim door. Officer Mendez, badge number 4937, obtained a photograph of the suspect Velasquez using California DMV database and victim Patricia Galarte positively identified suspect Velasquez. Cain Velasquez was identified by victim Patricia Galarte as a shooter. Victim Patricia Galarte stated suspect Velasquez employed her daycare facility for the last two years. So the mother, it looks like, or the wife of Harry Galarte running a daycare facility, Harry Galarte accused of, rep of molesting a close relative of, uh, of Cain Velasquez and Bender being the stepfather of Harry Galarte. So Morgan Hill police officers uh, located the suspect vehicle and initiated a vehicle stop on the black Ford truck. The black Ford truck pulled over and suspect Velasquez exited the vehicle and was taken into custody without incident. Morgan Hill police located and recovered a 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun in the suspect's vehicle and turned over custody of the firearm to the San Jose Police Department. The firearm was loaded with nine bullets and a 10 magazine, 10 round magazine. Another magazine was located in the console, which contained three bullets in a 10 round magazine. Two spent casing, 40 caliber casings were found on the front passenger seat. The firearm was found to be legally registered to suspect Cain Velasquez. During the investigation, patrol officers located multiple spent casings at the scene. A gun violence restraining order was served to the suspect before book, before being booked into the Santa Clara County Jail. So he has a so now he had the gun. It was legal to him at the time when the shooting occurred. It says, "I am informed and believe the aforementioned facts to be true, and believe that there is probable cause to believe that the suspect Cain Velasquez is guilty of attempted murder of victim Paul Bender." Signed, San Jose, California on the, and leave the blank of March, 2022, under penalty of perjury, Detective Joel Martinez, number 4117, San Jose Police Department Assaults Unit. So I read that in its entirety. That way there's no accusation. I'm taking this out of context in any way. And it's interesting because in the complaint afterwards, there are gonna be 10 counts that are gonna be uh, brought up against Cain Velasquez uh, when he's arraigned on Monday. So what makes this so difficult? Well, if again, if it's being done the way it's supposed to be done, wherein the as I say both sides are working with the same set of laws, the facts here, if they're not disputed, uh, and everything is as it as is alleged here, Cain Velasquez went after someone who was alleged at uh, molesting a very close relative. The assumption, and again, this is speculation right now. This is outside of what's there in the document. Uh, 
the uh, or the statement of facts is that the suspect is possibly Cain Velasquez, or sorry, the victim that of the molestation is possibly Cain Velasquez's four-year-old daughter, who was at that daycare for a number of years. So that there's an issue there in that as a a father went after someone molesting his four-year-old daughter if if it turns out to be his daughter his four-year-old daughter at the time I mean, who was four at the time who was there for two years i mean it was, as a she was there for two years who knows how long the molestation possibly went on for and that harry uh galarte was the one who was molesting his daughter or is accused at this time who there hasn't been convicted yet but he's been released on bail he was accused of molesting Cain Velasquez's daughter. Anybody hearing that story, if you're the audience that that story is being told to, it's very hard. And as a parent, I can tell you that's a hard situation to look at that your four year old child is being molested by somebody. Obviously, there's some premeditation because he waited till after the person is released on bond or as a is released on bail is out. And he went and he chased them down from their home all the way over to where where the shooting actually occurred. So it was a long speed. It was a long chase that happened. Lots of vehicle ramming as well as shots fired. The underlying problem, unless they can prove that Mr. Bender also had something to do with this molestation, is that Kane, he shot the wrong person. He went after someone and he shot the wrong person. So in the charging document on what, what they're charging him with, and there's 10 counts as mentioned. So attempted murder, uh, premeditation attempt, premeditation for the attempted murder, uh, personally and intentionally discharging a firearm. What else do we have here? Okay, they don't want him for bail. Okay, so count two. Discharging the firearm at an occupied motor vehicle. Personally inflicting great bodily harm upon Paul Bender. Count three. Attempt, I mean, did commit to attempt assault on the person of Paul Bender with the firearm. Uh, and that the person Paul Bender was not an accomplice to the offense. And this is where it becomes an issue. He's not an accomplice to the offense uh of molesting Cain Velasquez's daughter. Let's see. Count four. He committed a, an assault on Patricia Galarte, right? So different from battery, but there's an assault here. She feared for her life is something that she could say. An assault upon Harry Galarte, who is the alleged molester, who I as a that's one that I'm sure that everybody would go like, good. Commit an assault upon the person of Paul Bender with a deadly weapon and an instrument other than a firearm, so trying to hit him with his automobile. Same thing upon Galarte as count seven, and uh, did, a t uh, did commit an assault upon Galarte in count eight, willfully and maliciously discharged a firearm from a, mor from a motor vehicle on count nine, and carried a uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, has a who carried a loaded firearm it with the intent to commit a felony is count 10. So in all of those counts, uh, some of them might be dropped. I'm not gonna say it might be dropped, but the jury might look at it one way, the, the audience you're telling the story to, the issue that Kane is having right now. And, and this is the, the, the fundamental issue that when I'm looking at this, the fundamental problem is that he hit the wrong person. So he can state that he was enraged, he was angry, and that someone had attempted to or that someone molested his daughter. And any parent, your heart is going to bleed. And if you're on the jury and you hear that, your heart is gonna bleed. And unless the the prosecutors continue with the, well, he took the law into his own hand, mantra that they're doing right now, and maybe they're playing poker right now, but if they go back and they say, look, we get it, but imagine if you were in a crowd and that Mr. Galarte, who had just, has a, who had been, uh, uh, let's say he's convicted. Let's say he actually did the tr did the crime, and he's fleeing Mr. Velasquez. And 
and so are these other two people. They're all fleeing Mr. Velasquez, and he rammed his vehicle and assaulted the vehicle. They get out, the vehicle's not working, and they're fleeing into a crowd. And Mr. Velasquez start, begins firing into the crowd. Does that justify the fact that he, his daughter was molested? If you got hit by a bullet, if you caught a stray one, you're not the intended target, but he's there shooting, trying to get the guy who molested his daughter. Would you be okay with taking a stray bullet for somebody like that? I think the answer for most of us would be no. If you get the person who molested your child, I think the answer would be yes, I'm all on board. Do I understand the level of anger? Yes, I understand that level of anger. You've had time to sit on it, think about it, looked at it, knew where they were leaving from their home, and you followed them out. How is it that you did not block them in and stop them at leaving the home if that were the case? The issue that he's gonna run into, if we're keeping it 100, the problem that Cain Velasquez is gonna run into is the fact that he hit the wrong person. He went into it looking to get the person who molested his daughter. And that, again, that's speculation. I don't know if it was his daughter, was his close relative would be the accurate statement. Unfortunately for Cain Velasquez, he didn't hit the person who molested his child. He hit the wrong person. That's the problem with Cain Velasquez at this point. So if you're telling the story, if you walk into the jury and you have this information in front of you, and you have an audience in front of you, and you have the same law and the same facts, one side's gonna say, hey, this is a straw father trying to get someone who molested his child. How can you not want to be there for a father who wants to get somebody who molested his child? The opposing side should be like, yes, he wanted somebody who molested his child. But the problem is he didn't hit the person who molested his child. He hit another person. We're not here for the fact that he's trying to kill somebody for his child. We're here because he shot somebody who was not the person who molested his child. The attempted murder was not on the person who you tr who molested your child. You attempted to murder someone else. Now you also might have had the other person, but the person you were actually did hit did not have anything to do, was not complicit, according to the document here, with molesting your child. That's the equivalent of someone running in who did molest your child, running into a crowd to try and get away, and you firing wildly into the crowd to get them. And everybody who takes a straight shot, oh well. You got a straight round, oh well. It's okay. I would really, really fathom to, to see how many people would be okay with taking a straight round for someone, somebody who committed a crime. Police are coming in there, they're trying to get a person who committed a crime. It happens all the time, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. And the police get qualified immunity on it, however, most citizens don't. And if you're firing, trying to get somebody fleeing, I'm sure that the prosecution is going to tighten this case up and they're not going to allege that the, as a to a jury, unless they want Cain Velasquez to walk, which is very possible. They might want him to walk. So what they're going to say is, hey, Cain Velasquez was a, I say, he took the law into his own hands and we can't have that. The law doesn't favor self-help, right? If they're going to do that, I guarantee you Cain Velasquez walks and that prosecution didn't do their job because the issue is not that Cain Velasquez wanted to get the person who molested his child. The issue is that Cain Velasquez shot the wrong person. That's the issue. And that's going to be the problem if we keep it at 100 with Cain Velasquez.